Today we are going to talk about turning this mangled bit of breadboard prototyping into a beautiful printed circuit board. You'll probably recall a few videos back when I uh, talked about the Pi EFIS system. It's an open source uh, software package uh, with some uh, underlying code and uh, services that run on a small Linux computer, in this case a Raspberry Pi. I also want to mention another set of open source projects called uh, Experimental Avionics. Uh, you can find it on experimentalavionics.com. A gentleman named Oleg uh, has done a lot of these uh, open source avionics and uh, I will say that I uh, lean fairly heavily on some of his ideas um, for some of the boards that I'm going to demonstrate here in this video. Um, I actually did design all the boards myself, but I did use uh, a lot of his designs for inspiration. Um, I wrote all the code myself as well, um, obviously using snippets that I found online and other places. I did not use any of uh, Oleg's code or uh, his designs um, apart from uh, looking at them and uh, sort of engineering my own based on what I saw in pictures. In that video, I had several things plugged into a single CAN bus um, connector here that goes into the Raspberry Pi. Um, and I had another connector that went into the end of this with a couple of stray wires. Uh, I had one of these sidebars from a, a breadboard here that we were plugging different uh, devices into. But for the most part, our sensors looked a lot like this uh, tangled mess right here uh, on a breadboard. Obviously, uh, having a device that looks like this, that's just a bunch of breadboard wires uh, connected to a breadboard, um, it's not going to be sufficient to put in an airplane. Um, and so the first thing I decided to do was to start looking into how to make a uh, CAN bus hub. This uh, printed circuit board here started off uh, looking like this. Uh, this is a copper clad single-sided printed circuit board um, and basically it's just a piece of uh, fiberglass uh, with a very thin layer of copper stuck to the top of that. Um, I was able to use a, the software package KiCad to uh, draw out my circuit um, to design it the way that I wanted, wanted it to look. Um, and then I was able to print it uh, on a piece of paper. I was able to put that piece of paper over the top of this uh, copper clad uh, printed circuit board here. And then use an iron which melted the toner. Uh, I use a laser printer obviously for this because it's got uh, the toner in the uh, laser printer is made out of plastic. So um, as I laid the piece of paper on here upside down, used my iron to iron over the top of it. Uh, it actually melted the plastic onto the board. Um, and left a little bit of remnant there. I had to, you know, rinse it off with water and let it soak for a little bit to get the paper off without damaging uh, the leads and things that I put on there. Uh, and then uh, I dipped the whole thing into a solution of um, white vinegar and hydrogen peroxide and a little bit of uh, non-iodized salt um, and let it sit there for, you know, and you know, agitate it for a little while for, you know, half an hour or so and it eats away all of the uh, copper cladding except where the toner was. And so here is a kind of a complete version of that. Um, you can see it's got uh, little places here to put holes, to drill holes into it. The CAN specification uh, requires uh, each circuit to have two 120 ohm uh, resistors on the board between the two and the seven pin, or the high and the low pin, I should say. Um, so I have a couple of spots here where we can put in a couple of uh, resistors. Um, and then these are all DB9 connector holes here. Um, and it's set up in such a way that um, the pin on the outside is connected all the way around. Um, so it's just one huge circuit. Um, think of it like the rings on a, on a track um, around a football field or something like that. Um, and so this is what it ends up looking like when you're done. Um, there's a couple of... Uh, like I said, there's a, a resistor there and a resistor there that uh, connect the two resistors that you need for terminators on your uh, on your CAN bus, and then a whole bunch of DB9 connectors uh, going through here. So one of these connectors can be used to plug this DB9 connector that plugs into my Raspberry Pi, and it can go right into the circuit board here. All right, and then you can put screws in from the bottom to screw that into place. Um, so there we go. We have one started circuit here. So this board is the, the next design that I made. Um, it has a spot to put in Arduino Nano. It also has a CAN bus module that you can put onto the board. This little spot up here is uh, to hold um, 
a pressure differential sensor which can be used to measure uh, a static pitot line, um, meaning you can use it for airspeed or for an angle of attack sensor. Uh, this little area right here is designed to hold a buck converter that will drop power from uh, anywhere from 6 to 24 volts down to the 5 volts needed for the circuit. All of those things uh, work together to uh, create a CAN bus enabled um, angle of attack or airspeed indicator. Uh, and you can see that on the board here. I kind of wrote it uh, on there as well, airspeed slash AOA sensor board. Um, so that's what the board looks like. And here is what it looks like uh, complete. So it's got, again, it's got the buck converter here that drops the power down. Uh, it also has the uh, Arduino Nano here that does kind of all the computing. Um, and then the MCP2515 uh, CAN bus module. And then on the back side here, so all those things, you drill holes through it to put your pins for all those devices through. And then back here on this back side, I have an MPX V7007 DP. Um, this is a pressure differential sensor um, and it's what you call a surface mount uh, device here. So it's actually soldered instead of doing the holes through it, this is actually soldered right to the face. Um, so you can see these little foot pads here, there's eight of them, and that sits right on top of there and you just solder it onto the board. Uh, the rest of the chips on here, they actually have through pins that go through and you solder it from the back side. Um, so that's uh, connected again to my uh, CAN bus high and low pins and that goes out to another DB9 connector which we can then plug in over here onto our board. And then if we add power to this board, try to do this one hand, it's not as easy as it looks. All right, you can see it's starting to actually produce some data that's pushing out see that over here on this chip it's beginning to receive some and our airspeed indicator here has gone to zero instead of some random number and then if I just blow on the end of this you'll actually be able to see that airspeed indicator go up and down uh, I'm just blowing I'm probably you know three or four inches away from the end of this tube here while I'm doing that then the next one I'm going to connect is the exact same board except that this one is programmed as an uh, angle of attack sensor has the same exact chips on it and everything the only thing that's different is the code instead of having a pitot-static tube uh, connected uh, that tell you the uh, the speed of the aircraft this actually has a system that connects into a little 3d printed uh, pitot static tube sort of. Um, if you look on the front here it's got a tube uh, on the 45 degree here and 45 degrees here so as it's cutting through the air um, if you were to change angle of this meaning you were to tip the nose up for example it would actually allow more pressure to hit the bottom nozzle than the top nozzle so that there would be a pressure differential change um, that would turn positive. Um, that all goes up here to the same exact uh, sensor on the board. That all gets uh, converted into an angle of attack uh, message that gets sent over the CAN bus. So that goes over here to this line. And we'll plug in right here. I'll go ahead and power this one up too. And now if I blow on the bottom nozzle on this, you'll see the angle of attack sensor go up. the negative uh, angle of attack possibly too. Probably less important, but. Uh, and you'll also remember um, on my last video when I did a, a I made a uh, angle of attack sensor uh, configurator. Uh, it has three buttons on it. You have your zero G, a warning, and a stall uh, where you can actually set the levels on your angle of attack sensor. Um, I've gone ahead and created a new one uh, using a printed circuit board as well. It's similar to the other ones, just a little bit different. Uh, you'll notice that this only has two buttons now. Um, I've changed the code in my uh, Pi EFIS. Um, you really only need to have um, uh, your zero G um, and then I have a stall button here that you can push when you're getting close to a stall or even if you're you know reach the stall um, and then it interpolates um, the difference between uh, from here up 
So it'll actually interpolate um, a difference between your flying level and when you reach your first red mark here, which is a, a stall warning. We talked about this before. Um, basically all of CAN bus, um, the traffic, the network traffic runs over two wires, a high and a low wire. Um, however, the standard also has room for uh, adding power uh, to some of the pins on these DB9 connectors here. So I've actually also created a, another DB9 connector here that is plugged into the right pins to add 12 volts uh, to our board, which I'll just go ahead and plug in right here. And then I can plug that into a, I've got a 12 volt power adapter here, just for demonstration purposes. Plug that in right there. And uh, so basically now my CAN bus hub has um, the two pins that are set for uh, positive and negative are now powered. Um, so you can add you know, power from your uh, system. You could do actually two of these if you wanted a redundant system in case you were afraid that one might fail. Uh, you could have a second one plugged in here as well. Um, and then we'll go ahead and plug in this last uh, sensor that I, this is the, my most recent one that I've just created. Um, this one uses a Bosch um, IMU sensor. It's a nine axis um, IMU, uh, in, inertial measurement unit, um, that can give you attitude um, and magnetometer readings. Um, this particular one I have plugged in here that uh, can pull power from the board that we're putting in here. Um, so we could actually do that in any one of these boards. We can actually add power to the board um, pulling from our CAN bus. Um, this one actually is wired up, the rest of them are not. Um, so I've got positive and negative that then runs into this uh, power uh, step down um, chip here, which then turns on our Arduino. The Arduino then pulls data from this uh, IMU chip, tells it what, you know, what the attitude and uh, the heading and all that stuff is um, in space, converts that back into uh, a message that goes over our CAN bus and then we'll uh, go into our uh, Pi EFIS screen here. So I'll go ahead and plug this in. You can see that the board power's on. We'll give it a second for it to uh, get itself all ready to go. And in a moment here, we should start seeing this begin to move. There we go. So now as I move my board, nose up, nose down, left, right, I can, if you see the heading moving back and forth as I twist it side to side, um, and this is an absolute orientation uh, sensor, which means that um, it should work uh, no matter what your attitude is, your altitude, um, and heading and all that. It'll take that into account. It shouldn't make any difference if you're in a turn um, or anything else. It should be able to, to identify what direction you're going, what uh, your attitude is, regardless of G-forces and all those kinds of things. Um, it also gives out some more information. I don't have it hooked up yet, but I should be able to use this to also measure um, slip and skid information uh, to make this tiny airplane here move back and forth like this or the ball to move back and forth. Um, that's not wired up to do that right now, but uh, at some point I should be able to do that. Um, and then the last board, uh, we talked about this already um, in the past. This one right here is just our a, a board that I have programmed to just send a bunch of uh, test data over the wire uh, into our system just for testing so we can just kind of see other things moving. So I'll go ahead and plug that in and we'll give it some USB power here for this as well. So this board is basically just uh, creating test data that's sending over the wire. Uh, this board actually has a CAN bus built right into it. Um, and I was able to also tap into um, the I2C uh, connector here and put on a little chip uh, that measures temperature and barometric pressure. Um, so you can kind of see here, my barometric pressure right now says 455 feet or something like that. If I lift this up in the air, it kind of goes up a little bit and goes back down depending on the barometric pressure. Um, but it also has a temperature gauge in here, which I currently have connected to the oil temperature. Uh, if I put my finger over it, you should see that oil temperature begin to rise up to 82 point. There, it's dropping down now that I've let go of it as it uh, normalizes to the temperature in my garage. 
So I'll do this again, touch it, and it'll go up. Let it go and it goes back down. The rest of the data on there is just a bunch of mock data that I've built. Um, if I go to the engine management screen here, you can see that everything that's on there can move up and down. Um, and basically all of those numbers can be uh, programmed uh, to run off of sensors um, on different boards here. I've still got plenty of room here for more peripherals to connect in, uh, more sensors. Um, one of these, I could actually uh, plug a second one of these uh, USB boards here in and have a second screen so that I can have one that's uh, you know showing engine mon monitoring and the other one that shows the primary flight display. Um, and that way if you have a failure you can switch uh, interchangeably back and forth. Uh, you just set one to be your default and one be the, the other one for the default. So uh, one last thing to note here, um, you could Take the time to learn KiCad if you really wanted to, where you can draw out your own circuit boards and things like that. But another easy trick for a small and simple circuit, uh, you can actually just use a permanent marker and draw um, on your uh, printed circuit board on the uh, on the copper before you etch it. Um, and the uh, the marker, whatever the chemical is in the marker, um, it actually keeps the uh, the etchant from uh, reaching the, the copper there. So here's one that I built. Uh, it's a really simple one. I didn't do it in KiCad. I actually just did this with a marker. Um, basically, it has a couple of termination blocks here. Um, one of them you can put 12 volts in or really any voltage up to 24 volts um, into this side. Um, it follows these traces up and then it goes into a four pin header into which I plug the uh, buck converter. The buck converter then converts the 24 volts or 12 volts or whatever into whatever I, I turn that uh, potentiometer to. Uh, in most cases I'm going to turn it to like five or six or something like that. And then it comes out uh, through this other termination block where I put my multimeter just to measure what the power difference is. Um, so again, 12 volts in, goes through my buck converter, comes out here, I measure it just to make sure that I have it set to what I want. Uh, one thing that I noticed uh, when I was using this, um, I set these for five volts thinking, okay, the Arduino likes five volts. That's kind of what all the circuits uh, use. Um, so what I actually did was I set it to five volts and then when I plugged it into my IMU chip, the one that shows, you know, attitude and all that stuff, uh, it was actually a little, it didn't have quite enough power to run both the sensor and the uh, CAN bus module. Um, and so I ended up having to use this to bump the, the power up just slightly, uh, bumped it up to six volts instead of five, um, and that took care of it. Everything started working again. Um, just for your information, um, the Arduino nano boards, they, uh, they have another buck converter built into it. It can take anywhere from, I think it's uh, six volts up to like, I think 22 or something like that. So uh, this is sort of just a redundant one. I don't want to put too much um, draw onto the Arduino board itself, so I have a separate uh, board that uh, that I feed power to, uh, which is the little buck converters that I've been using. Uh, I drop those down to about six volts, um, and then the Arduino can handle whatever it needs from there. Um, and it works pretty well, so um, definitely highly recommend this. Again, you can make your own circuit boards with just a marker and a copper clad single-sided uh, printed circuit board. Um, just draw on there whatever you want it to look like, drop it in the etchant, let it sit for you know 20 minutes to a half an hour, um, agitate it a little bit to keep it from uh, you know getting gross um, and then you've got yourself a printed circuit board pretty simple to do. Well I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up here uh, if you enjoyed this uh, video please feel free to com comment uh, like subscribe all that stuff um, no pressure but uh, if you enjoyed it please uh, consider um, if you have questions feel free to put those in the comments um, I'm sure there's plenty of questions about this one um, I may do a more in-depth uh, video on how to actually do uh, all the different steps to, to create one of these circuit boards. If you're interested, you know, let me know in the comments and I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely do that. Uh, if not, then I'll probably move on to building out my wing next because that's uh, kind of the next big thing. Anyway, thanks for uh, hanging out if you've made it this far and uh, we'll see you on the next one.